Ooh. I felt like I just got an electric shock. Can that happen? Hello everybody and welcome to another little instalment of the Great Guitar Giveaway in association with Crimson Guitars and the Dorset Guitar Museum. I've got something really exciting on my bench today. I've got this Epiphone Riviera reissue and we are going to be doing a pickup swap out on this little puppy. In here we've got the P93s that it comes with but we thought nah no chance. So we went out and we bought a bunch of P90 original collection. These are like 100 quid each and we've got three of them so we're sticking 300 quid's worth of pickups into this 550, I think this is 550 quid's worth of guitar. <laughs> and actually, if you count the price of the Bigsby as well, you've kind of pretty much got the whole value of it right there just with the pickups and the Bigsby. So we're gonna bump this guitar up to maximum legendary status. The build quality on this guitar is fantastic. And it just seems such a shame to not have fantastic pickups in it as well and just take it back to its roots. Um, I think the Riviera came out in the early 60s, like 62 or something, but it got really overshadowed because the Beatles were using casinos. And so everyone thought, oh, casinos. And everyone thought, man, eh, Rivieras. But I mean, it's a 335 shape more or less. And I mean, <laughs> Whenever you've got, you've got a hollow body, you've got double binding, as in binding front and back. You've got neck binding as well. It's got this amazing Bigsby on it. It's a mahogany neck and then maple body. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous guitar. What we should do first of all, before we do this pickup swap out, is we should play it and just get a little vibe for how it sounds now with these pickups in so we can enjoy the improvements that we make on it. Okay, so here we are with our Riviera R and it is gorgeous. It's gorgeous to look at. The, um, the Bigsby, just as per usual, just feels solid, chunky, feels like just a well-made bit of kit, which it is. And that really helps the hollow body to feel like a solid, well-made bit of kit as well, actually. It just adds kind of this heft to it. Gold hardware looks amazing. Um, the color is gorgeous. And I'm not exactly sure what, the, what they call it, but it's a kind of, um, it's almost like a kind of burgundy. Like I said, we've got the double binding, we've got the neck binding, we've got it all. We've got these gorgeous um, uh, Grover Deluxe, like vintage tuners. Um, so the whole package is just stunning. But what I'm lacking is a bit of clarity. So I mean, even on the, see I've got it on the, the bridge pickup here. <laughs> Would like a little bit more top end than that personally these start to come into their own when you come down the, towards the neck a little bit you have got some nice kind of break up with the bass there yeah that's really nice but i think we can get more out of these gibsons chatting to sam the, the pickup master he says that Epiphone's always come with slightly muddy pickups. I'm not sure whether you guys have found that, but these certainly feel like they are not muddy, but they're just, they're just lacking that tone. So yeah, I think it's probably time to just have a look at these other pickups, chat about them, and then start to disassemble and uh, swap these guys out. Okay, so you're getting a bit of a better view of the, the little puppy here in all her glory. I think you can see the color a little bit better, but let's have a look at our pickup, shall we? This is what you get from the Gibson pickup shop when you order a classic original P90. Whoever gets this guitar, I'll, uh, I'll pop this sticker in for you so you can, you can brag about your, your sexy pickups. So yeah, we've got the same dog ear cover. Cover comes away and here we are. See, really nicely made, lovely soldering on the back, really, really tidy. It's been waxed, which means that no microphonicness can occur. It's a really nicely made, it's got a real nice heft to it actually. That's a nice base plate. Gold base plate too, you know, just in case anyone's got x-ray eyes and get upset with the fact that the base plate doesn't match the hardware. I know what guitarists are like, I am one. And they're like that, aren't they? 
generally this is a beautifully made thing. I'm going to swap out the screws because we've got silver screws here and we want gold. We need gold everywhere. If we're going to have it somewhere, it's got to be everywhere. So yeah, a nice pickup. It's coming in at 7.7K, which is about average for a P90. So let's begin the process of getting inside this guy <laughs> and uh, doing fiddly work through F holes. So you're going to get to see my best concentrating face, which I think you might enjoy because it's pretty bad. Just one last thing to mention before I start my work on this, my work, I've got the best job in the world. We will be doing a level crown polish on these frets uh, regardless because they all need them. And um, so that's always a bonus. You know that when this guitar arrives at your door, it's going to be playing better than it ever has. So click the link and get yourself onto the great guitar giveaway to get yourself a chance of having this arrive at your door in a very big box. Okay, before we get too excited, let's just disassemble a few things so we don't have any nasty surprises when we pick this up later. We don't want things falling off. I may just stick something down on here. There we go. I also have some leather which I'm going to lay over the top of the body just where I can. But when you do that, just make sure that you give it a good brush off because get little bits of solder all over this and little shavings. It's going to do the opposite of what you want. I think that's about as good as we can get. These dog ears are just too wide for our kind of neck slot here. They're just like, Wah! Okay. Here we are. Epiphone. Bridge pickup, presumably a slightly higher output than the neck. Our new pickups are actually all the same output, 7.7K all the way up, which I think the strap we did the other day was the same, same all the way up. But when we build our humbuckers, we always have the neck humbucker lower output than the bridge humbucker, just because of all that low end that you get around here is just overwhelming but hopefully with three single coils there's a bit less bass there's a bit less reason to have a lower output pickup on the neck you might also be able to see how they've actually had to raise the screws right up because we've got a tunematic bridge the tunematic sitting pretty high up and they've put these little wax spaces in well they haven't put them in but these little kind of wax spaces have kind of occurred and if I dig my nail into them, you can see they actually start to crumble. I thought they were rubber at first, but they are wax. So yeah, just a sign that these pickups also have been wax potted. Okay, here we are. I've managed to fish that out rather clumsily. So we're going one pickup at a time. This is our bridge. So let's figure out a way of protecting this guitar whilst we solder. Now, I must admit, I think <clears throat> it's going to be a lot more attractive with our two conductor wiring. When you see it through the F holes, it's going to be much prettier than the kind of what we've got red, yellow, and black that we've currently got. Ooh. I felt like I just got an electric shock. Can that happen? Here we go, guys. I've just made a little cradle here out of some of the foam so now we can begin disassembling these pickups so just feeding this through now I'll push it all the way through and then i'll retrieve it once it's through So it's been retrieved and now I just have to solder it back in. Oh, 
I'm going to tin this pot. And on it goes. Nice and tidy. So here's a good one. Slide the pot underneath your hole. And then I'm just taking a little Stanley. I'm pushing it into the groove of the pot, twisting it. And then I'm able to just pull that pot up. Very smugly like that. Now, before I get too excited, I, uh, I'm just going to check this. Mm -mm. Sounds like something's the matter. Glad I checked. Okay, so with a bit of fiddling, I found out why I was getting no signal. I had got a bit of solder um, from my lug on to my ground wire. So I was essentially grounding it out. That's now sorted and got sound, got signal. So that pot can go back in and we can move on to the next one. Maybe it's in, into the little slot in the pot. And out she comes. Okay, moving on to middle pickup. Luckily, we've got these striking colors to follow. And this is making its way down to this volume pot here. Uh, worth mentioning that this guitar has had a electronics revamp. We've got Switchcraft and CTS pots. Um, so these are no cheap components. These are decent components. Funny little thing, the switch has been mounted in quite a strange way. Usually the, the, the hole for the switch to sit in is, is larger than the, the barrel of the potholes. They just haven't bothered to make the hole bigger. So it's just kind of sitting on the surface of the body and me and Ben just discussed it and we actually quite like it. So we're going to leave it preliminarily. Oh, where it is now. Um, but we've decided that whoever wins this guitar can decide whether they want us to fix that and we'll make a little video of us doing that. It's a simple job with the reamer, but you know, give you a bit of autonomy over your own guitar. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Let's get these, uh, let's get these swapped out, shall we? I just know people are going to be going, get that knife away for the pay. Don't worry guys, I've got the skills. Fine. And luckily we've got nice big F holes. So although this looks kind of fiddly and annoying, it's, it's actually could be a hell of a lot worse. I'll tell you that. I'm going to go in. Do you remember that game operation from the nineties? I kind of feel like that. It's going on, zzz, zzz, touching the edge of the corpse. There it is. Here he is. We'll pop that in our cradle. Although, not quite working out the same because the wire's too short. There we go, that's lovely. Really important to keep that steady. Here again, I don't know how well you can see this, but if I just place the pot underneath the hole, then I can just go in with my 
scalpel and if I just twist and lift it comes out pretty easily. I'm going to go through and tidy up all the wiring in here properly and again we'll just check our work All good. Bang rang. Okay, so successful pickup change out. I need to tidy up these wires. Probably just gonna string them together in certain places and just tuck them down around here. Obviously there's limited access. I've got big fat fingers and I can barely get my pinky finger in that f hole but we can still make it nice and tidy and then i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to give this the usual crimson treatment level crown polish and then we'll do a setup and see how these pickup sounds Ooh. sad news peeps the metal covers that came off they're not going to fit on these new pickups so plastic it is hey ho we had a moment where we thought oh my god we've got some gold covers which we do which would be just pretty slamming but again they're the wrong size i don't know why they just are so you know never mind maybe next time i very nearly forgot these screws are the wrong color we need to change these out These screws are not the same size. 2.87, 3.04. Right, I'm gonna have to find some gold screws. Bit of fretboard cleaner, this is good stuff. And it's not too harsh, so it's not gonna damage your fretboard like white spirit, or indeed lemon oil, which is actually quite bad for your skin. I wanna show you something. I found a little dink, uh, probably caused by overzealous um, fret filing. Uh, <clears throat> we're just going to scrape that dink out with a blade, surgical blade. Can you see that? That is the edge of my file. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scrape that out. 
scrape away as if I was using a kind of tiny, well, a tiny scraper, which is what this is. And be careful to go only as deep as I need to go because I don't want to start, you know, undermining the fret. But it's already looking better. And it's quite a nice opportunity to just clean up the edge of the uh, binding. I think you can still see that on camera. Just a little bit more to go. It's gone, nice and quick. So yeah, really nice, easy way of getting rid of those overzealous marks. Um, I can hear probably some of you saying um, you should have used a fretboard protector. Totally, yeah, totally valid. Um, I would definitely use a fretboard protector if this was a maple fretboard um, or if this was a lacquered fretboard, maple. But I find them so cumbersome that I'd actually rather just be careful and then do any repairs that I need to do on rosewood or ebony. Good practice to use a fretboard protector if you can get on with them, but I just find them a little cumbersome. And finally, let's restore this fretboard. I've hardly got any left. Let's see if this does it. Whoa, that was more than I thought. <laughs> God, I've got it everywhere. Don't put that much on guys. It's probably why I haven't got any left, but I mean, come on. Look at that, look at that, look. Oh, that's beautiful. That's lovely rosewood, isn't it? Isn't that gorgeous? I could look at that all day. All right, guys, I've done a bit of kind of behind the scenes mm -hmm. stuff. I've put the thing back together. I've put the pickup covers on. I put the scratch plate back on. I've given it a polish and I mean, oh my, God, doesn't this look just so gorgeous? I love this guitar. Um, so let's get some strings on her and give her a setup. And then we're going to play. And the moment of truth, let's see how Gibson pickups are in comparison to stock Epiphones. What do you reckon? I don't know. It's a lot easier than stringing up a Floyd Rose, isn't it? Only joking. Sorry, guys. Actually, I must say, on the, the Randy Rose video that I did, as much as it really annoyed some people, me cussing Floyd Roses, a lot of you came back with some really helpful tips about just flipping the string around, basically, and using the ball end up, at the, up on the machine heads, which, thanks for that. That was a really helpful bit of advice. Never be afraid to give advice here. And uh, advice, advice over uh, criticism is always way more helpful. So thanks for that, guys. I'm an idiot. I forgot to put the spring back in, didn't I? Doing. So who was watching? Who was watching me spring, string this up and going, uh, Josh, uh, Josh, uh, mate, I forgot to put the spring in. Because if, if it was you, then well done. You should probably have my job. All right, guys, I've run out of time uh, to finish this today. So I'll come back and finish it tomorrow. Um, probably wearing a new t-shirt. I'm only telling you that so that you don't get too worried about the consistency of the video. Not that it's interesting that I'll be wearing a new t-shirt. Anyway. Slight update. Um, I have actually put the uh, the original Epiphone metal covers on because 
although they're like a mil different, they're not different enough for you to see. Um, and they've actually, the screws have gone back in perfectly well. You can't, you can't see the difference. But the main reason that I actually put them back in, although it does have its advantages, given that I think it's gonna kind of add to the tone for a start. And also these covers are flat. They need to be slanted because otherwise they hit into the strings. So it's all worked out very nicely. You've got nice metal covers on your guitar because you're going to get it. Yeah, you. Your guitar has got nice metal covers, quality, and I'm sure it's going to help with the tone. I mean, why would it not? We all know tone's such a science. I'm a fan of science. I'll see you back here tomorrow. We'll finish this baby off. Good night. I went down a little too far there. Fill that with a bit of glue. But even though this tip is small, I'm going to squeeze it to make it smaller. That's all it takes. I have a confession to make. I'm an idiot. Um, yesterday, half asleep, I strung up the Bigsby wrong. Um, which was foolish, so uh, <laughs> forgive me, guys, if you've been screaming at the video for the last five minutes going, nah, you did it wrong. You're right, I did it wrong. So let's just whip back, get that right. So yeah, the mistake I made was to not bring the strings underneath this roller bar here to create that, that nice steep break angle. Okay, that's that fixed. Now we can move on. Ben and I were just having a little chat about the importance of sharing mistakes and not covering them up. We're all here to learn, so let's learn genuinely and authentically. That's what I say. That's how I get away with my mistakes. <laughs> okay guys, so we've got one more wee complication on here. We were given this spacer with the guitar, but they obviously didn't have the guitar set up right because this is way too big. Let me show you, come over here and I will show you. Okay, so I hope you can see here, the neck pickup, we're roughly three mil away from the E string. Bearing in mind, this is set up now, so this is where it's gonna be. Now, the bridge pickup, we're more like six. So, we do need a spacer underneath here, but this spacer is way too big. We're just gonna sand this spacer down. This space is at five mil now. We're gonna take it down to two or three to compensate. So here we are, a nice simple fix. I've just tape and glued this down to a piece of flat timber. Sean H, a Crimson student. Thank you, Sean. And we'll take this to the drum sander and we're gonna take this down to between two and a half and three mil. It's gonna lift us up enough, but not put us in danger of fouling our strings. Okay, I hope you can see this, but we've got a way more equal spacing, well, distance between the pickups and the strings now. Um, that's really important, obviously. You know that the, the neck pickup is gonna pick up a lot more of the low end and is therefore, tends to need to be dialed down towards the guitar body anyway. And the bridge needs to be dialed up to balance the sound. So we were really in the wrong direction there. So we fixed that issue. All right, guys, there we have it. The Epiphone Riviera is complete with brand new Gibson pickups and just is a really, really classy, classy guitar. An interesting guitar with the interesting history of, uh, you know, being slightly left behind because of its casino cousin, which is a shame, but don't blame the Beatles, blame Yoko. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, go to Great Guitar Giveaway for a chance of this being delivered to your door in a great big fat box. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas.